Welcome to my Octoprint tutorial videos. In this today's video, I will show you how to install and configure OctoPi on your Raspberry Pi. So, without further delay, let's begin. First of all, you will need an image of OctoPi, which is a Raspbian install preloaded with Octoprint. To download, just Google OctoPi and click on the first result. I will also have links to that website in the description. Just download the most recent Octopi image. You will also need a software to load this image to your SD card. I prefer to use Etcher, so to download that just go to etcher.io, again links will be in the description, and download it, then also install it. Now to flash the Octopi image to the SD card, open Etcher, select the micro SD card there, and select the image file. Then double check everything is correct since this has the risk of erasing things on your computer and if it's everything is correct just click flash it will probably take about a few minutes when it is done Unplug and replug your SD card. This will make sure the Windows detects the files in the SD card properly. Now we will configure the network settings. To do that, open the config file here. You need to decide if you are going to use an Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. Keep in mind that you will need an, either a USB Wi-Fi adapter or a Raspberry Pi to use Wi-Fi. It doesn't work with older Raspberry Pi versions without a USB adapter. To use a wired connection, just uncomment the wired connection lines. To use Wi Fi, you will need to select the appropriate password type. In most cases, that's WPA2. Uncomment those, you need to enter your sysit, and which is your network's name and your password there. When you have done that, save it to your SD card. Now before you plug it into your Raspberry Pi, you need to have Bonjour installed on your computer if you don't want to navigate to your Raspberry Pi manually. So to do that, um, it's an Apple software and unfortunately it's not available as standalone so you need to install iTunes so go ahead and download iTunes if you don't want to navigate to your IP manually if you have if you prefer that way you will need to detect the IP address of your Raspberry Pi so to do that once you've plugged in it, plugged it in and started the Raspberry Pi you will need a software like IP scanner or on your computer or think on your iOS device or whatever else that you may choose you can detect you the IP address using that it will be named Octopi but the bonjour method is simpler so that's why I'm not going to be I'm not talking about it too, in too much detail right now now that you have uh, iTunes installed and plugged in your Raspberry Pi go to octopi.local on your browser if you don't have the Bonjour install just use the IP address you detected below a few minutes ago. I will go to the IP address directly because I have two octopies in my network that's why it's not going to work properly. So now we will configure the software. This is the wizard that it's going to be using just click next. Here we can set up an account I highly recommend you do this since it's a good security feature just create a name, enter a password and then confirm it then click keep access control enabled it will create the account and log you in automatically now click next here we can set up slicing this is useful if you want to slice within octoprint which I do not recommend you do since it's better by every aspect to just slice using a proper slicer on your PC and just upload the G code to octoprint so don't bother with this and just click next here we can enter the settings about your 3d printer 
you can name it, enter the model of your 3D printer. In the next step here you can enter your print pad settings like the size and the shape etc. You can enter the speed of your 3D printer here and here you can enter your extruder information. Once you entered all of these, just click next. Now the initial configuration is done. Click finish and then click reload now so that these changes will take effect. Now you should be able to connect to your 3D printer by clicking this button. I don't have anything plugged in so I will just show you my other Octoprint installation. Now I will show you all the other settings. Click, click the settings icon on the top left. Here you can set up specific settings for connecting to your 3D printer. Just leave the default values. They are fine. Uh, here is the printer profile we created a few minutes ago. You can set the temperature presets here but you don't need to mess with this as your G-code files will contain these information in them. Here you can set up pause and resume scripts. For example, you can set them up in a way that makes filament changes simpler or just plug in a filament sensor using a plugin and I will have a separate video about this in the future so it will automatically pause the print and move the extruder to a better position so you can easily change the filament and resume the print but again that will be in a different video uh, here you can set up a webcam if you have any connected. You can either use a USB webcam or a Raspberry Pi camera, which is what I use. Here you can see the account we created a few minutes ago. You can edit and create more. This is the settings for G-Code Visualizer. It allows you to see what your printer is printing in real time. Here you can see a working example. Here is your API key. You may need this for some of the plugins that you can install. Here you can change the title and appearance of Octoprint. You can also change the language here. Here are your logs for tr troubleshooting. Here you can see all the plugins that come pre-installed. By clicking this button you can download more. As you can see there are a ton of options and I will cover some of these in future videos. Here you can check software updates and download them. Lastly, here are some settings for slicing if you are using Octoprint uh, by, for slicing. It is powered by Cura Engine. So this is the end of this video, if you found this useful please leave me a like, if you have any problem with this tutorial leave them in the comments below and I will try to help you. I will upload another video about this series in the week after next week on Friday and it will be about turning your 3D printer on or off using a relay board and the PSU control plugin. Stay tuned for that, subscribe so you don't miss it, thanks for watching.